Let's praise God. He's a good God. So glad that you're here tonight. You know, we've been fasting. A lot of us have been doing holy warriors. And, and I believe that we're more ready than ever for a move of God in our lives, in our families, in our cities, in our neighborhoods. How many believe that God is ready to invade the areas that we put a target on? And, and these next three nights, we're going to have fun, but I want to take it real serious. Because God is interested in every person that's lost. And we could get so involved in our personal lives that we could easily get distracted and busy from the mission field. There's someone today that maybe is in this room and you're suicidal, you've been tormented by demons and you need freedom. You don't need another church service, you need a miracle in your life. And those people are surrounding us. I remember when my daughter at four years old was diagnosed with cancer. I drove by Loma Linda Hospital hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times. That hospital meant nothing to me until my daughter got sick. And my daughter got cancer, they put me on the fifth floor. And when I walked through that floor, there was a whole bunch of little boys and little girls that were fighting for their lives. And kids were dying on that floor. Parents were broken hearted. And then I realized there's so much need in this hospital. And God told me, I got your daughter what I want you to do is go from room to room. Every time you hear, say hi to Brianna, and then go room to room to room. Because God told me, you have hope. You have a savior. They don't. How many understand that? Come on, we have hope. We have a savior. And there's people around us that don't. There's somebody today that's bound by a drug addiction that's a second and third generation problem. Maybe you're in this room tonight watching online. But we believe that God can set you free from a generational curse and a bad inheritance. Somebody else, some of us just had a bad inheritance. God, come on, God wants to give you a new inheritance and it's in Jesus Christ. God can turn it around. God can, come on, Jesus can restore all the mess. Someone around us needs a miracle. You know, so tonight, I asked for the word from God, and, and I would say this, the word that God gave me is real straight, and it has a mission attached to it. I don't know how long I'm going to preach tonight, but I do know this, when you get the word, I want you to let that word settle in for the rest of the year, that this word... Come on, this is an impartation tonight. This is an impartation tonight. Come on, this is tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to get an impartation. We're going to run with it. Come on, we're going to grab it. We're going to use it. Come on, we're going to apply it. And we're going to go for it. We have not been prepared just to be happy. We've been prepared for a mission. I'm going to understand that. Come on. There's a day you feel happy. There's a day you don't, but it doesn't change the message. Come on. It doesn't change the mission. There's days you feel good. There's days you don't feel good, but it doesn't change the mission. We are in a mission. Come on. In good days and bad days, we have a mission. Someone is dependent on us. They don't know. So let's pray. And tonight... If you need a breakthrough in your life, call on Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You'll be made whole tonight. 
Someone's going to get set free tonight. You're going to be set free from a demonic issue. Come on, tonight. Someone, come on, let's believe that someone can get healed tonight. Come on. Someone can get restored tonight. Someone can get, come on, their freedom, their joy, their purpose, their mission, their vision, their hope tonight. Let's pray. Father, we glorify you. We got three nights, then a Sunday morning, then another Sunday night. Five services. Five is the number of grace. I thank you, Lord, that we're ready to receive your grace, your ability, your favor, your unmerited favor on our lives. It starts tonight. But we want every dose that you're going to give out. Every word is going to be a building block for the next word. And we're ready. I'm asking Lord to speak through me today. Strengthen me. Strengthen my body. Strengthen my mind. Holy Spirit, empower me to speak. And we prepare our hearts to receive tonight. This is the most dangerous room for the devil right now in California. We just don't have some christians in this room we got some warriors in this room we got some interceders in this room we got some prophets in this room come on we got come on we got some missionaries come on we got some evangelists we got some pastors we got some all fire believers in the house of god tonight they're saying god you created for a purpose i want to fulfill my purpose i don't want to die without fulfilling my purpose this room is dangerous hallelujah Let's give God some praise if you're ready to receive from God. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Breakthroughs in the house. Freedom is in the house. Healing is in the house. Jesus is in the house. God Almighty is in the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. How many know God is good? We're, we're making some room for everybody here in the house. You may be seated. Sunday morning, we got our goals. Write down the goal. Turn them in. Sunday morning, we're going to bring a first fruit offering that God could use to bring breakthrough and blessing into our lives. Tonight, we're going to receive a word from God. I want you to get this word in your soul, in your spirit. And then we're going to go to work. There's impartations that happen with just words. We're receiving words tonight that will change our lives forever. And the title of tonight's sermon is, We Are Here to Interfere. We are here to interfere with what Satan is doing in our lives, in our cities, in our families, and the world, we are not going to allow the enemy to do and say whatever he wants without our resistance and our interference. He will not be allowed on our watch to sell his lies, his immorality, and plan of destruction in our families, in our marriages, in our children, because we, as a church, are stepping in. We are here to establish God's kingdom on earth the way it is in heaven. We will interfere with every spirit of doubt, unbelief, religion, depression, hate, murder, perversion, suicide, divorce, generational curse, apathy, violence, division, unforgiveness, rejection, unworthiness, fear, anxiety, witchcraft, sexual morality, poverty, hopelessness, and etc. Every spirit is going to experience interference. We are here to make people aware of God. The good news of Jesus Christ and the power of his existence 
and the power of a loving church. People must know how much God loves them and that they can be saved from the rule of sin, torment, and Satan. We are here to interfere. It's over. We as a church cannot be silent watching people get beat to death in the spirit. We must step in and go into our neighborhoods and let the little boys and little girls know you're important to God. And we're not going to let the devil, the next gang member, the next drug dealer, pervert you, take over your life, ruin your life, and send you to prison and hell for the rest of your life. There's a church that's ready to intervene. We are here to intervene. We are here to interfere. We cannot wait for someone else to do something. I remember it wasn't so long ago. We were on the streets. And while we were on the streets, some guy is beating up a girl, punching her in the face. I stopped my car, and I used my deepest voice I could. I go, hey, what are you doing? He turned around, and I thought, we're going to have a fight here. But if we have to fight, we're going to fight. But you're not going to beat that girl on my watch. I am here to interfere. He turned around, and he said this. Pastor! <laughs> and he started crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I go, girl, run. <laughs> and she ran. Prayed with him. But this is all I'm saying. If we do nothing, nothing changes. We are no longer going to wish for change. We are going to be the change. Come on. We are here to interfere. In Mark 1.23, suddenly a man in the synagogue, a man in church, in other words, who was possessed by an evil spirit, there's people in church that are possessed or demonized. And some of us are trying to go to a psychiatrist, but you need an encounter with Jesus. Say, Pastor, you against psychiatrist. I'm not against a psychiatrist. I'm just saying the psychiatrist cannot deliver you from a demon. Some of the addictions are so deep, and some of the pain is so deep in your life, you need God to set you free. There's some things you really want to do in life and something is holding you back. And you're saying, how come I can't get ahead? Could it be that there's a spirit trying to hold you back? Could it be that there's a spirit in your family that's ruling your family and you're all the same and you're wondering, how come everybody ends up in the same addiction, the same anger, everyone ends up divorced, everyone ends up messed up. What is going on here? Some people in the church, you don't need another good sermon. You need a touch of the Holy Spirit. And you need God to set you free. And unless he sets you free, you're going to be in the same cycles for another year. Aren't you tired of being held back? You're going to have to allow, before God can begin to inter use you to interfere and the devil's plans, you're going to have to allow God to interfere in your life first. Say, Pastor, you mad? I'm mad at the devil. I'm serious. 
Tonight, I'm not here to hype nobody up. I'm here to get an army ready for a battle that we're in. Come on, it's time to wake. Come on, it's time for us to wake up, watch, and pray. Because right now, Satan is asked for you by name, and it's time for a church to get, come on, get back alive and depend on the Holy Spirit and realize we are in war. Look, so there's a man possessed by an evil spirit. And I'm going to tell you this, demons are real. There's demons assigned to every family that's here. They're called familiar spirits. They just don't want you, they want your offspring too. But they know, parent, if they got you, they already got the kids. And it said that by an evil spirit cried out. So this demon is crying out. And this is what the demon said. Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Why are you interfering with us? And I really believe that right now there's this spirit. This is what God was showing me. There's a spirit. Hell knows something. It's very interesting that this guy had one spirit. He had an evil spirit. But and then when he starts talking about why you're interfering with us, he should have said why you're interfering with me. What he was saying, this guy I control and I possessed him. But we had a meeting in hell. And we're recognizing you're just not interfering with him, you're interfering with us. And why have you come to mess with us now? We got it all set with no resistance. We got the hoods locked down. We got the families locked down. We got their minds locked down. We got them in addiction. We got them hooked on porn. We got them hooked on weed. We got them hooked on drugs. We got their alcohols, alcoholics. They're angry. They're full of unforgiveness. We have it all on lockdown and the church is asleep. Full of death. Sleepy. With no fire. And we've forgotten our mission. Not no more. Come on, let's come on. Not, not no more. We love you. Everybody on the front row, we love you. Everybody in the middle, we love you. In the back, we love you. You are not going to fight alone anymore. We are here to interfere with you. So the question demons are asking now, why are you messing with our city? Why are you messing with our families? We have this on status quo. It just stay within your four walls of the church. Stop messing with us. So now, that makes you want to interfere more. <laughs> I remember we first started this church. It was right across the street from the prayer march that we just did. Last weekend, it was a little building across the street. It was a big building when we, when we first got in there. We thought it was huge. Fourth and Arrowhead. We always would go to the streets. Our church is on Fourth and Arrowhead. That was a statement. And I remember one of our first services on Fourth and Arrowhead, there was a young man. And the young man came to the church for the first time. He was a visitor. And he came up to the front for prayer. And when he came up to the front for prayer, I prayed with him. I touched him. And when I touched him, he fell straight to the ground like he got hit by a truck. Bam! It was a collision. The spirit, I want you to say, what was the collision? The kingdom of God was in collision with the kingdom of darkness. Bam! God doesn't fall, the devil falls. So he fell. I went down there to pray with him. And when I went down there to pray with him, the young man opened his eyes wide open. And he said this, I hate you. I don't even know you. You hate me? I don't even know you. You're the first time here. You're a visitor. I hate you. And this is what the demon said next. Be next. Because of you. 
we're losing so many souls. That's what he said. I go, oh, you don't even know me. It's a demon. The next statement he said, we're coming after you and we're coming after your family. You're all going to die, the demon said. I go, no, we're not going to die. You're going to be cast out right now. So I said. So what we did was that young man needed freedom. And I want you to understand, the devil's playing for keeps. He's out to devour you and, and take you to eternal damnation. While we're involved in our little play sins, Satan is playing for keeps. We got that young man set free. I found out that it was his first time here and he was from Mexico. That demon spoke to me in English and he don't even know, the guy didn't know a lick of English. But the demon did. Why are we talking about this? Because if we don't interfere, he remains bound, headed for hell forever. If someone doesn't come and say, you know what, devil? You're not going to do whatever you want to do. Let's cover the word interfere. Someone say interfere. interfere. It means to oppose. Someone say oppose. oppose. To hinder action. It means to intervene for a particular purpose. It means to prevent. It means to intercede. It means to stop. It means to suspend. It means to make trouble. It means to get involved. It means to step in. And it means to come into collision. We are here to interfere. Say with me. We are here to interfere. And if we don't do it, no one's going to do it. We can't allow our schools to teach whatever they want to teach and a church just remain quiet. We will pick at schools. If they start bringing content in there that has nothing to do with God, the devil, come on devil, you're no longer going to be able to do whatever you want to do on our watch. Come on church, hey, we are here to interfere. We can't allow pimps in our, in our city to pimp, up our teen, pimp out our teenagers. Right. 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 On G Street, they're, they're shipping in teenage girls from Las Vegas all over the state and putting them on our, our streets. Not on our watch. Right. We are here to interfere. Right. We're going to start a ministry with a whole bunch of ex-prostitutes. Come on, we're going to have you out there and say, we are here. I'm not on our streets. We are here to stop this thing in the name of Jesus. We love you, baby. We got a home for you, too. So now, we got to get involved. Someone say get involved. Get involved. You know what's crazy? Sometimes we, gotta, we go to church and we ask ourselves, how was it? Like, like, what? Is this a movie or something? Are you coming here to be entertained? Or are you coming here to grow spiritually? Come on, are you coming here to get a breakthrough? Come, come on, are, because I guarantee you this, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find there's somebody in here that's saying, I'm tired of living a whole hum, weak Christian life. I want to I want to be here in these last days to interfere and stop what the devil is doing. We are going to do it. This year we have some goals to interfere. We're going to build a single mom's ministry to help single moms become God sufficient in our inner cities. We're not going to let our, come on, we are not going to let our single moms in the hood raise the boys and the little girls without some help. We're going to intervene and get them strong. And come on, help them be self-sufficient and God-sufficient. We're going to recruit and train a, 
a thousand leaders this year to lead discipleship groups. We're going to knock on 60,000 doors. Wait, why 60,000? That's all the doors they got <laughs> in San Bernardino. Every one of them are going to experience an interference. Who is it? The way we're all outreach. We want to let you know something. God hasn't forgotten about you. And whatever marriage problems, see, come on, problems you have in your house, I don't care how crazy your kids are, there's an answer. Call on Jesus. He can save you. Sixty thousand doors. We're gonna knock on more doors than Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons combined. Why? Because come on, we are not a church that lives within the four walls of the church. We are here to take this right here. Come on and overflow into the world, to the hurting, to the broken. Is there anybody ready to interfere with the devil's plan? Not on my watch. Someone say, not on my watch. There might be some people don't like us. So what? I'm here to please God. I'm here to help somebody get set free. I want people to like me, not the, but not at the not at the expense of someone dying and going to hell and being abused and, and we not do nothing. Right? Our church is going to put in a million volunteer hours in our community. Someone's going to someone say, we're going to get involved. Well, how are we doing a million? You do, you, you do what you need to do. We're not going to allow a, a neighborhood to have all kinds of trash all over the place. We're going to go in there and clean up some neighborhoods. So why are you guys doing that? Because we are here to interfere. We're going to make friends with little boys and little girls in the neighborhoods. And we're going to let them know you are important to God. You're important to us. We got a great church. We'll bust you. We'll do whatever it takes. But you no longer are going to be alone anymore. We're going to launch a church in Compton. We're going to L.A. We are here to interfere with every demon in L.A., San Bernardino. Come on, strongholds. We're coming against you in the name of Jesus. We bind you. You must come down. Our weapons are mighty for tearing down strongholds. Compton, L.A., we are coming. Come on, we're coming. The places where, come on, gangs have been birthed out. Now there's going to be a move of God birthed out. We're going to create a man school for inner city men. Fathers have been missing from the homes. It's a demonic plan. It's a demonic strategy. Take the men out so there's no coverage. And keep the moms in poverty so they're just thinking about barely making it. They're looking for the next meal. I can't take care of my kids. I'm so focused on just getting the next meal. And if someone in the hood would just come in and help me, I'll give you a little sex in exchange for a little money. I'm not a prostitute. I'm just trying to take care of my kids. I'm hurting. I'm broken. A little crack, a little weed, a little cocaine can ease my and numb my pain. I don't feel like I want to be a drug addict, but I'm hopeless. I have no hope and no one is giving me an answer. Stop looking down on someone that's in pain. Go help them. We 
are here to interfere. We will no longer look at pain, look at suffering. Come on, ignore the pain and suffering and hurt and poverty around us. People are going to hell every single day. But now we are waking up a church that is here to interfere with the devil's plans. We're going to create a man school. I'm going to go in the hood and talk to the major gang members. And I'm going to look them straight in the eye. Do you even know what it means to be a man? I know because I talk to them in the neighborhood. And you know what they tell me? No. I don't know what it, what it takes to be a man because I've never had a man in my life. Can you show me? I took one of the guys from the hood. I saw him and his, his, his girlfriend walking around. I stopped my car and I said, hey man, you guys need a ride? Park, Pastor, Pastor Mark, you crazy. I was led by the spirit to do this one. I don't do this all the time, but I just saw, like, he has, he has his wife or his girlfriend, him, and two kids. And they're walking on a dangerous street. I go, that's a very dangerous place. I see, I'm here to interfere. So I stopped my car. I go, get in. So we got in. I go, where are you guys going? He goes, we're going to go catch a bus. To go where? Go home. How long is it going to take you to get home on a bus? He goes, a couple hours, I'll take you. Because we are here to interfere. He's from the hood. He knows the hood. He knows the hustle. He knows the drug dealing. He knows everything about the hood, but he don't know about Jesus yet. He don't have any hope yet. Stop looking down on him. Have you even spoken to him? I talked him all the way home. He had tears in his eyes. He was listening. He goes, man, I need this in my life. I don't know what to do in front of his girlfriend. Because our young men in the neighborhood are victims of Satan. Satan has taken over families, destroyed the kids. They have no education. They're broken. They're, they're addicted. They're angry. And they're willing to die for their hood because they don't want to live. And what are we going to do? Complain? We are here. To interfere. We're going to interfere with the love of God. Come on. We're going to interfere with the word of God. We're going to interfere with preaching. Come on. We're going to interfere. Come on. With meeting their needs. We are here to say no longer in San Bernardino will, never, will the people not know about a hope. It's in Jesus Christ. We're going to let everybody know. Jesus saves. So. I don't know, but I know this, is that when Jesus showed up, the demons, like Jesus didn't show up and say, hey guys, I'm Jesus. In other words, I'm the Messiah. If you've not heard about scripture, a lot of scripture about me. It wasn't like that. He showed up to the synagogue and he just started teaching. But when he starts teaching, he's not doing no mental teaching. He's doing some spiritual teaching. What he by that is, his teaching is coming from a different source. It's not coming from a source of religion. 
It's not coming from a source of the intellect. It's coming from a source of deep relationship, spirituality with God. And they start recognizing, wait a second, man. Look at this. In Mark 1, 21, Jesus and his companions went to town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went to the synagogue and began to teach. What did he do? He began to what? Well, look at, look at their response. The people were amazed at his teaching. For he taught with real authority. Then when he started teaching, they said, look what they said about his teaching. Quite unlike the teachers of religious law. What he was saying, there was religious people teaching, but Jesus' teaching was nothing like them. Some of us in this room, you got addicted to religious teaching that's dead. But the, the, the thing you like about it, it makes you feel comfortable because you can stay in your sin. It doesn't confront your sexual morality. Come on. It doesn't give you any conviction. You just say, I feel good. I went to church. I go back home. I'm still the same. You go, but you come in with your demons. You leave with your demons because there's no authority. There's no power. There's no anointing. And God is saying, not in this house. This house will be full of the presence of God. Come on. You're going to be here. You're going to get convicted. You're going to repent of your sins. You're going to get saved. You're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to go out there and interfere. Come on. That's right. That's right. So not like the teacher of religious law. He's speaking with authority, conviction, depth. And suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit began shouting. Now, I want you to think about this. That man most likely was a member of that synagogue. <laughs> he was not a first-time visitor. Because to be in the synagogue, you have to be part of that synagogue. Not anybody could just go in and come out. That's not like our church. There was prestige for a seat. So they were surprised because Sammy Kadal, that's his name. I don't know. I just get everything. He was, Sammy Kadal was part of our church for years. And all of a sudden we're hearing something we've never heard. And they're probably looking at him. Hey, Sammy, come on, calm down. Or maybe it was the Spanish church. Calmate. I mean, you're embarrassing us right now. That scream sounds a little, a little eerie. I mean, this sounds a little weird. Come on. What are you doing, Sammy Cabal? But the Bible says he began shouting. Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? We know who you are. I want you to know, in the spirit realm, demons know who you are. They also know who you're not. And they also know the temptations that you're biting on and coming in here and worshiping God and not repenting and you think you're going to cast out a demon, the demons are saying, we know, we know Paul, we, come on, we know Peter, we know Jesus, but hell doesn't know you because you must belong to one of us. No, 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 no. I'm a member of the Way World Average. I went to membership class. Is that what you're going to quote with a demon? You better be submitted to Jesus. 
Your identity better be that I'm a child of God. I live for God and I am here to be full of the Spirit. Come on, and I'm here to interfere with everything that the devil's doing. I've chosen sides. In order to choose sides, you're going to have to die to your sin life. Jesus of Nazareth, we know who you are. Why are you interfering? We got this city on lockdown. Matter of fact, we've had this area on lockdown, the Galilee region, for hundreds of years. We've had the city on lockdown for like 400 years. The religious people are just doing their nonsense. We got them. As a matter of fact, the head priest, he's one of us, full of our demons. He's no threat. We began to have problems in hell since that day you started fasting. That day you started fasting, I want you to get this. How did Jesus get his authority? I'm going to end it with this point. How did Jesus get that kind of power where demons recognize him? Well, he got it in a fast. The Bible says, look at what the Bible says. The Spirit compelled Jesus to go, this is verse 12, Mark 1, 12. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals and the angels took care of him. But I want you to think about this. Jesus fasted in such a dynamic way that Satan had to go see who was fasting like that. Because Jesus did not eat for 40 days. He did not drink anything for 40 days, he should have been dead. But the Spirit of God was sustaining him in his weakest physical moment. Jesus was here to interfere with everything that Satan was doing for thousands of years, and he knew. If I am going to destroy the enemy and put him underneath my feet and interfere with everything he's doing, I'm going to have to go ahead and face the same Satan that took out the first Adam. When Adam came, you took him out with a temptation of a fruit tree. Jesus said, we're going to do this all over again. But this time I'm going to be Adam. And you're still going to be Satan. And we're going to see who wins this battle. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to fast for 40 days, food and water. So I'm going to fight you in my weakest physical condition, and you come with all your demons, all your power, I'll, I'll let you tie an arm behind my back, and let's go to war. Bring every temptation you got, because I want to defeat you royally. I want to strip you of the crowns that you took and the dominion you took from Adam. Let's get it back. Wait with this. So now, Satan comes and tempts Jesus for 40 days. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every single way you've been tempted. But the only difference, he didn't give into it like we do. When, they, when Satan gave him a temptation, he goes, no, it is written. Turn the stones into bread. Nah, 
It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You're not going to get me like you got Adam. You got Adam with food. You're not going to get me with food. Go again. He knew that if he was going to go out there and interfere with Satan, he had to face Satan. It was the spirit of God that took Jesus into the wilderness to be tested by Satan. Who's Satan? The big shot. The shot caller. The head demon. The ruler. The prince of darkness. The god of this world. The deceiver. The accuser. The destroyer. Lucifer. Beelzebub. The one that rules this world right now. And the sad thing is, he's ruling with little or no opposition. Not no more. Right. We are here to interfere. Yeah. I'm going to just give you this, this verse here. In James 1, 12, which say, someone say temptation. temptation. Every time... You're tempted to sin. Satan is after something you got. Satan does not tempt for sport. He tempts for power. When Satan tempted Adam... He wanted something from Adam that Adam had. What Adam had was dominion over the whole earth. God told Adam, dominate and rule the whole earth. It's your earth. I created for you, dominate it. I believe you could say in the spiritual realm, that Adam had a crown, he was a king on earth. And when he was walking around, Satan was looking at that crown and said, I want that. Because if I, if I defeat him, I get that crown. I get the authority, I get the power, I get to rule families, I get to rule the earth, I get to rule human beings. They, they will be my puppets, I got them. If I could just get him. When a king takes over a territory and he kills the existing king, he now rules that land. So every time you're being tempted, this is what God saying wants. He wants to overcome you to strip you of your authority and power and confidence. Strip you of the ability to interfere. But I got good news for you. When God allows you to be tempted, he's not trying to get you tempted so you fall. He's getting you, allowing you to get tempted so you, be, you defeat the devil. Let's end it with this verse. In John, James 1.12, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. The word endure means that you remain, you do not retreat, you stick it out, you persevere under misfortune and trials, you hold fast to your faith in Christ, you bear it bravely, calmly, you continue without yielding to the temptation. You hang on, you live out your faith, you never say quit, you never say die, you continue being submitted to your king and your Lord, do what you want to do, but there's no quit, there's no yield in me. I serve God. But look what it says. Afterward, after what? 
after you don't give in to the temptation and you overcome it. Someone say afterward. afterward. Look what it says. They will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Now, a crown represents exalted rank. And back in those days, they only gave it to kings or was given as a prize for a victor. So it's given to vic victors, those that have gone through some type of competition and ended up winning the competition. Victors. Olympians, gold medalists, champions of the world, or kings with authority. I'm here to interfere. But this is what happens when I overcome temptation. I don't come out of temptation with nothing on my head. I come out with a crown. And I want you to get this. In that crown, it defines who I defeated, what trials I've gone through. In Jesus' crown, after those 40 days, his crown, he got from Satan. So when that demon saw Jesus walk in with that crown, he goes, I know that I recognize that crown. That crown is from Satan. You took it from him. We already know you're the Messiah. There's nobody else could have took that from him if it wasn't the Messiah. But I want you to understand this. There's going to be a day that we stand before God. We're going to lay down every crown that we got. But right now, as you overcome temptation... And you don't let the devil overpower you. But you overpower that temptation. You're not going to come out, come out the same way you went in. You're going to come out of that trial. You're going to come out of that difficulty. You're going to come out of that suffering with some greater authority than you've ever had. And the spirit, come on, it's a spiritual crown. There's going to be demons that recognize when you show up. They're going to say, oh my God, that man, that woman didn't give in to the same things everybody else been giving in to. That's the one we got to bow down to. Why have you come to interfere in what we're doing? Come on, let's give some praise to God. Let's overcome and let's go out there and interfere. Let's all stand up. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Endure for a few more minutes to get a crown. I just imagine a crown with all kinds of jewels. And every jewel represents a battle, a trial, a difficulty that you overcame. Some of you guys right now are going through the toughest times of your life and God says, you're going to get through this and I'm preparing you so you have more anointing, more power and more authority than you've ever had. But you can't yield to that thing no more. Tonight, someone needs to be done with their compromise in life. Because the Satan is stripping you of your authority, your power, your mission. And you've lost your confidence. And God says, nah, I created you to slay giants. I created you. To get a vision from me and help somebody else know me. You're not a mistake. You got to stop letting the devil take you out of position for just a temporary temptation. We're here to intervene. If tonight, I'm going I'm to pray for you. But if you're tonight, you're saying, Pastor, I need a breakthrough in my life right now. I'm ready to surrender my whole life to God. There's, a, I want you to just think about this. There's a temptation that you've been given into over and over and over. And you're wondering why you can't get ahead as a Christian. You're getting confused. It seems like, you're, man, I can't get a breakthrough. But God tonight is letting you know. The same Jesus that fasted for 40 days and conquered every single temptation is ready to partner up with you. And he said, let's fight now. 
I'm going to help you with this thing. You're not going to do it on your own. I'm going to help you. And you're going to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tonight, the power of that, come on, that satanic hold is going to be broken if you want it. But you have to let go of your pride. Who cares what people think? Get right. Amen? Come on. If you have a porn problem, stop trying to hide it. Just confess it and get it over with. Just do it. If you're an adulterer by secret, no one knows. Tell on yourself tonight. Get set free. God already knows. The demons already know. It's tripping you of your purpose. It's tripping, come on. It's tripping of your authority. It's tripping you of interfering with the devil because the devil's interfering with you. Proud of you guys. Who else? Come up here right now. If you say, I need a breakthrough, come on. I need a breakthrough tonight. I need, come on, be honest. Come on. Something's been holding me back. I need a breakthrough tonight. One of the ways you're going to interfere with Satan is letting God interfere with your life tonight. Come on, get to the front and get your breakthrough. Get your salvation. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Come on, get your integrity back. Get your name back. Get your purpose back. Come on, it's time to give it up. Come on, give it up. Give up the sexual morality. Give up the homosexuality. Come on, give up the porn. Give up the weed. Come on, give up the sin. Give up, come on, the escape. Come on, give it all up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, someone's going to get set free from a spirit of gangbanging tonight. It's been in your family. It's been a generational curse. Tonight's your night. Someone's going to get set free from witchcraft, from lying, from stealing, from perversion. Who else? Come on, you're being tormented. You can't sleep at night. There's something bothering you. Your, your mind is racing. You need salvation. Come on, you need Jesus. You go back to the drugs because you want some relief. And God is saying, I want to beat your relief. Come on, come to me, all that are weary. Heaven later, I'll give you some rest. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is your moment of breakthrough. Who else? Church. We're going to war, and we're going to love some people in some very practical ways. But we're going to be willing to lay down our lives, lay down our schedules. Come on, lay down our busyness to help somebody. There's somebody that if you don't reach them, they're never going to be reached. In the name of Jesus, people are going to set free right now. In the name of Jesus, she's being set free. Come on, demons are coming out right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, demons are coming out right now in the name of Jesus. Demons are coming out in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. It's okay, mama. Just let it go. Let go of the pain. Let go of the hurt. Let it go. Let it go, baby. Just let it go. In the name of Jesus. No more hold. Come on, you've gone through enough pain in your life. Come on, you've gone through enough pain in your life. It's time to get set free. Come on, this is our day. Come on, this is our moment. Okay, now, how many up here, you're choosing sides tonight? Come on, you're choosing sides tonight. You're saying, I'm living for God now. Come on, you're saying right now, I'm going to live for God. I'm choosing sides tonight. Proud of you. Takes a real man to live for God. What does the devil use against you? Temptation. In the name of Jesus, someone help her right there. In the name of Jesus, she's going to set free right now too. Right here, right here. In the name of Jesus. Power. Come on. Power. The presence of God is here. Jesus is here. The same Jesus. That, come on. The same Jesus that cast out that demon is right here. Jesus said, come out. And that demon came out that day. 
Oh Rabba Satarabasi, Oh Riende Gebahai. Praise your name, Jesus. Let's pray. You know, I, I'm going to teach you something. You want to get breakthrough in your life? One of the ways you get breakthrough, number one, you got to repent of your sins. You can't come up here trying to get rid of a demon that you've been submitted to through your sin. You say, Pastor, I'm addicted. I can't break it. That's why who the Son says free is free indeed. You can have to trust God that sets you free. You need a miracle. You don't need more discipline. You need a miracle. You need a, you need a breakthrough in your life. No more sex out of marriage. If you're not married, you're not supposed to be having sex. You got to wait till you're married and you're committed to your wife. Say, so, Pastor, but I'm a man. I got No, you got to control your life. Give your life to Jesus. Live a holy life. Come on, overcome. Get in classes and then marry your wife. Be a man of honor. One day you have a daughter. You don't want somebody sleeping around with her with no commitment. You know why I'm saying this? Because some people, we come up here, we don't even know what we're doing. For some of us here, I love you. But understand, the struggle that you're dealing with, if you don't repent of your sins, Satan has a clause on you. You got to let it go. We got to get rid of the lesbianism, homosexuality. It's a sin. I love you and I'll let you know. You might be tempted, but you could overcome. With every temptation, God will make a way of escape. It's not easy, but you got to fight. We love you. Satan uses that to give you a false identity. He's exploiting your pain and your hurt. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I know I'm a sinner, but I repent and I ask you now to save me, set me free, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I renounce all sin, every demon, every generational curse come out of my life. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. Jesus, you're my Lord. I follow you. Use me to interfere with what Satan is doing in my family, in this world. Use me to love people. I'll give them everything you give me. I'm saved. I'm born again. And I'll follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on. Let's give God some